Hey everybody, um, I'm just trying to make a full recovery from COVID. I was down for 24 hours and I think it's because I was staying on triple doses of vitamin D or actually more than that. Um, I also stayed on vitamin C and 500 IU of vitamin C, um, three times the recommended daily allowance is good. Okay, so the recommended daily allowance is usually pretty low. Okay, the first thing you really need to work on is sleep. So, before you go to sleep, now I know this is going to be hard, but make sure your phone is off and out of the room. Okay, so uh, studies show that if the phone's even in the room, that you lose just a little bit of sleep. So you could lose like almost up to an hour sleep. That one hour is pretty important when you need at least seven hours sleep and Americans aren't even getting that. So look at that. Look at um, making a sleep time, like start turning the lights down. Go into your room and start making it a nice little haven for you. Even take a bath in candlelight. So all of this is gonna take those serotonin levels and lower them down and up your melatonin, which is going to put you to sleep. So Mel puts you to sleep, Sarah wakes Please you up. Make sure your magnesium levels are up so that helps you sleep and relax the muscles in your body. Most of us are low on magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin C, and K2 goes with D to um, help put calcium back into your bones. So that takes the calcium from over here and it actually transports it into the bone where it belongs. So instead of getting bone spurs or all of these weird pains and weird growths on your bone, it goes into the bone and makes the bone stronger. Um, another thing you want to do um, is get plenty of water. As a gauge, eight glasses of water a day and a really smart thing to do in the morning is get your eight ounces of water, a little sprinkle of Himalayan sea salt, a squeeze of lemon, and about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. So apple cider vinegar helps to break up this enzyme that breaks up fat. But as we get older, we need to start working on things that are going to help supplement that. And one of those things, it's like a little hack, is apple cider vinegar. So get that in the morning, one tablespoon. Get a tablespoon in your um, salad dressing or somewhere else during the day. Uh, substitute out certain foods and bring in certain foods. So that way you could stick to this for the rest of your life. And not it's not just a little window of a diet. This is not just a little window of a diet. Okay, another thing you wanna make sure that you have realistic goals set aside. So it is possible to lose a pound per week or a half a pound per week um, doing what we're doing. We're eating whole foods, straight out of the ground, closest thing to earth, and we're eating animal protein, or you can eat plant protein. Um, seafood, we're gonna up that to get the omega-3s, or you're gonna take uh, fish oil supplements to get that omega-3 really really important and you can take uh, flaxseed oil and chia seed oil those are both really great to get into your diet or just chia seeds crushed up and put on something i'll share a chia seed chocolate pudding um, you can add raspberries or whatever you want to add to it for flavor i'm also sharing chocolate milk key lime pie and flav city with the key lime pie recipe that i shared with you there's a two-year-old making that key lime pie and it's super cute. But I'm telling you, that is something that you can put into your diet and have. You can also have pancakes. So I'm going to start sharing all of these things on my YouTube channel. And I'll share the, um, the link to that. And you can go in and just look at what you need to look at. Like if you want to see a spaghetti sauce or if you want to see a stir fry or whatever, you can make your meal plan from just the videos and then go in and cook with me. And I think that would be great because the key to um, having lifelong health and good body composition actually is cooking. And cooking's not that bad and you'll see that in the videos. A lot of my recipes only take a few seconds or a few minutes I should say and they're delicious. I am not suffering at all doing this. Um, it's not a diet but most people look at diets as a little certain period of time where you suffer and you're deprived. I don't want you to look at that. So what we're doing is a two week challenge, which you're well aware of. No dairy, I mean, sorry, you could have dairy. 
no alcohol, no grains, and no sugar. <clears throat> this was quite the challenge for some of you, and I'm very proud of you if that's what you did and if you made it through the week. Now, if that was a struggle, you need to get a hold of me to find ways to get through this second week. Today is Monday, and we want to get through all the way to Sunday. So we have two super clean weeks. So the microbiome is now starting to heal. Heals like uh, the intestinal wall heals in three days. So you're replacing those old cells with new cells that fast. Um, the microbiome takes a long time to build up. So you wanna just build it up correctly. You wanna get those probiotics in there, fermented foods, apple cider vinegar, raw sauerkraut, kimchi, um, kombucha, just don't get, remember I went over the video, I don't know if you saw it, but you wanna make sure that you don't have over six grams of sugar in your drink, whatever drink total that is in ounces. Okay, so the main thing I wanna go over today is ingredients and how to read ingredients on labels. And so I'm gonna put my glasses on and I have to look this way so that the reflection doesn't shine right off of the glasses. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see. Let's look at something that people make a lot. If you grab the wrong pancake mix, this is the Birch Benders, which I think, you know, it's a pretty good company. It's a, it's organic, it's non-GMO, but on our challenge, this is not good at all. So, oh, sorry, there was that glare. <clears throat> You're gonna look here and it says 13 servings per container. So that's not very big. And so it makes about two four inch pancakes per serving. The calories are 120. Not bad at all, right? But then you look down here and you're going to carbohydrates. Always go straight to carbohydrates. 26 grams. So four goes into 26 six times. Just a little bit over that. So that's six teaspoons of sugar in your pancakes. Plus you're probably going to put syrup on it. So now we're talking a huge amount of sugar. First thing in the morning, if you kick off that sugar, you're gonna um, have insulin in your blood. And as soon as that insulin goes off in your blood, especially early in the morning, when you already have insulin in your blood, insulin goes off to wake you up with the cortisol and all of this with the serotonin. So your body is up and it's got sugar being released into the blood so that you have the energy to wake up for the day. And now you're gonna super kick it off <laughs> with like something sweet. And that's the worst thing you could do because now you're going to be on that roller coaster of coming up and going down. You're going to, do, you're going to go up in the sugar, up in the um, insulin as soon as insulin is in your blood and the longer it stays in your blood. So if you eat more once you have a crash, insulin goes back up. Well, you cannot, and, and I am saying you cannot lose fat. You cannot burn fat. It's all locked up in its little fat cells staying because you're in storage mode as soon as you have insulin in your blood. Insulin comes from juice to high carbs. So juice, if you look at the carbohydrates in a glass of juice, it's like you're eating four oranges without the fiber. So that's a straight shot into your bloodstream. It's like shooting sugar. So is this, it's all pre-digested. You don't have to do anything to break this food down in your stomach. Yeah, straight to sugar, actually bread can turn to sugar faster than sugar, a tablespoon of sugar, bread. Bread gets there faster in, in the blood. So yeah, bread is not the best thing for weight loss because it juts up your insulin levels. It's about the insulin in your blood. It's about how you break food down. But number one, the first thing we wanna look at, getting the ridiculous carbohydrates that are doing nothing for you, noticing them and getting them out of your diet. So a tiny bit of education goes a long way in health. Let's look at another food. So this one is Newman's own Saccharini, which I think is pretty good. I love Paul Newman, so I used to buy this, but now let's look at it. <clears throat> so it starts with tomato puree, diced tomatoes, and tomato juice, green bell peppers, mushroom, extra virgin olive oil, red peppers, sea salt, garlic, citric acid, black pepper, parsley, fennel seed, oregano, and um, I see absolutely nothing in here that can harm you. This is all good whole food ingredients. So about five servings in a container. So that's a pretty good little scoop of this um, 
tomato sauce. And let's go to the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are 12 grams, and that's 12 grams per serving. So you're, on your spaghetti, you're getting 12 grams. So that's what? Four goes into 12 three times. So that's three teaspoons of sugar. But three grams of those are fiber. So subtract that out. So now you have 11 to nine grams of sugar. That's not bad. You could burn that off pretty good, pretty easily. Um, another thing you wanna look at in your carbohydrates is, so this is 12 grams. Over the day, you don't wanna go over 50, most of you, to lose weight and to keep your insulin levels low. So I'm gonna take the 12 grams of carbohydrates total, always subtract out the fiber, and that'll be your total, total carbohydrates for this food um, on your plate. So right now we're looking at nine grams of carbs and you're gonna eat two, well, hopefully you're eating two meals. So if one is a green smoothie, it has high carbs, but it has high fiber. So really there aren't hardly any carbs in that whole green smoothie at all, um, depending on the fruit you're using. Use berries and apple to stay safe. So that has hardly any cal um, carbohydrates. This is only gonna give you nine. If you put it on spaghetti squash, you're gonna get high carbohydrates in that spaghetti squash. Um, but it's not going to harm you because of the fiber level. It's a high start, so it's higher on the GI. Um, just be careful with the spaghetti squash. On week three, totally have it, totally have it. It's, um, there are so many good properties in squash. You need to get that in the diet. Also, keep those cruciferous vegetables coming. So it's really good in the sulfites. You wanna get that in your body. Uh, sulfites can uh, fight cancer. And there are all many number of other reasons why you should have them. Um, let's see here. Yeah, sodium levels can be pretty high. I'm really not afraid of salt. I haven't overdone salt in my diet and I drink a lot of water. And so I tend to need to replace those minerals and you will too because as you lower those uh, refined carbohydrates and sugars out of your diet, you're going to release water. So your largest um, body weight loss is in the beginning when you flush all of that water out and it feels so good because now you're not all bloated out. But you do need to stay on top of your electrolytes if you feel dizzy or you feel flu-like symptoms. You need to get like a little sprinkle of that salt, like I said, in the um, water in the morning with a little bit of lemon or through the day another little sprinkle and um, that's just a really good idea if you feel like you have a headache or like flu like kind of feeling symptoms peanut butter <laughs> so I love peanut butter and I like this one Justin's naturally delicious but um, calories 210 calories and two tablespoons this one packs a fat punch so this has to be one of the things you consider toward your fat which would be about 70% of your calories 70% of your calories, but a small amount on your plate. So two tablespoons isn't gonna take up a lot of space on your plate, but it is going to pack a huge punch fat-wise from the calories. So let's look at it. Carbohydrates. We have six grams. So if that's going toward your 30 to 50 grams total that day, this is not bad. And then you're gonna subtract out one gram of fiber. So now it's five grams of carbohydrates here. I would slap that on an um, apple and have that as a snack if I was starving or if I just wanted something to eat that day in my eight hour window. So the eight hour window, week three, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to have just two meals a day because I know that ups the ante and fat loss. It helps burn fat when the less you, okay. So the less the body is digesting, the more the body needs to turn to the, your fat on your body as fuel because it has nothing. It's already burned through what it's eaten earlier. So this is super important. And also during your fast, if you're doing a 16 hour fast, those last two hours, you're getting, you're getting into the fat burn. The, bo the body is turning to its own fat fuels and now it's going to become fat fuel efficient. And that is so great because now you're gonna start to move that fat from being in deep into the uh, internal organs out into visceral fat and then used as fuel to burn off. 